All right, everybody, here we are again, and I I got a, an oak stick this time. I got this in at Menards, and it's one and five sixteenths by six foot long, and it's oak. And the reason I like oak is it's strong, and it doesn't like when you cor when you carve out uh, poplar, it, it frays out, but. This isn't one solid piece, it's actually joined together and it actually is very strong joints and there's a lot of surface area they glue. So I'm going to make this into another maze stick. My maze stick was one of my favorite sticks and I gave it to a, a friend of mine who asked me to make them and I wasn't making them anymore, I just gave up on them, I just lost it. But every once in a while I think I, will, I would like to make one and I don't do requests. I, I, no, I, I, the last one I made was for a guy that it was like a veteran and I, I I had to make it for him. So anyways, I don't do requests. Uh, this one is going to be a maze stick like I said before and I, I got to lay it out and how I lay it out, we'll get on the next step for that. Alright everybody, I, I took the next step, I cut it down to the height I needed. When you, when you want a walking stick, you want your arm to be like parallel with the ground I guess or something and just make it make it where you want it and then take a toilet paper tube cut it down the middle and wrap it around here tape it real good you're going to use this a lot so up around the top is where you're going to have the top well of course and and mark where you want it and then put your hand around it and figure out how far you want I usually go about five to five and a half inches for the for the handle and then just go around and there you go and I will carve this down just a little bit later you know for the for the wrapping that I put on it so the next step is to pop this up here I got a long this is a long aluminum tape measure uh, ruler and I think it's four foot yeah it's four foot and it'll be perfect for this I'm gonna draw lines I have to draw the pattern out for this I have to draw lines from the top to the bottom and I want them parallel and I'm just going to eyeball it the straightest I can and then I'll go from there. Okay, I figured it out. Last time I think I clamped the ends down. This, this time I just taped it. And now I want to draw a line all the way down. That's the first line. Now I want to figure out how wide I want to make the maze itself. So I'm going to have to do some thinking on that, and then I'll mark it on my toilet paper tube, and I'll mark it on my toilet paper tube, and I'll just keep going around and make, make marks this way all the way around. Then I'll use the ruler again, and I'll line them up and draw out the lines. Okay, now what I did, I took a tape measure, and I measured around, and it's four and a quarter inches round. So I just figured... If you're gonna make if you're gonna make it you have to make it even to where it's gonna go all the way around it's gonna be not halfway here it's gonna be a quarter inch even all the way around if you put marks at a quarter inch so I marked out a quarter inch and I put a mark here then I just turn it and put a mark here and I'll do the same thing on the other side of the stick all right now that I got it on the top and on the bottom I'm going to use my straight edge and connect every line together starting with this one. I'll, I'll just keep marking all the way down and it'll be a, a line all the way down to the next one. After three tries I got, finally got them all laid out. Now I want to go down a, a quarter inch each one and go all the way around, around it with circles all the way down the length of it. Alright, I finally got it done. It took about an hour to make this grid. So now what I want to do is draw in the line for the maze and go all draw one all the way down. I'll use a sharpie and go all the way down and then I will draw in the dead ends all around it. So on to that part. So it'll start here and I'll just go however whichever ways this will be the path that actually works. And I used gloves, you can see the, the, the pencil marks come off on my hands and it's kind of hard to see the lines now 
but I'm gonna have to be just be careful and not rub it up against anything now one thing I forgot to explain was you have to go you have to leave some in the middle opened like this one I went too far it has to be an even number like this is one two three it should have came down here instead of this one so I'm gonna have to go this way and then leave this one blank and then cut over here because you always want to you have to have a raised part in the middle anywhere I did that but I went down and marked over every two where I make the twist now I'm gonna go back and draw all the dead ends in and that's all I have to carve out every every line that's gonna be a lot of carving so let's get on with that all right everybody I'm all done with drawing it all in see it all the way down now all I have to do is carve it out but first first I'm gonna carve out the tip and put the tip on there so to protect it while I work on it and I'm gonna use I have a couple of these bits you can look at it, it it's a it's a cutter bit and here's the the number on there if you ever care to get one of these and it was about six dollars six or seven dollars I think and they, they last pretty long but this being oak it should last a pretty long time and I'll use I'll use it to cut it cut the, the thing down on there and shape I'll sand, I'll cut it in so deep then I'll use a sanding drum and I'll sand it and until it fits up on there the tip the rubber tip that you use for like table legs and stuff you usually buy a four pack for like a couple bucks and I'll get on with that all right now I just have to keep working at that I use this bit here I went around and cut and then I'm using that sander so I got to put this on here and what I did with this is I used stretch wrap I wrapped it up and then I used tape I went all the way around it to protect it because I don't want any more of the the pencil marks to come off and that's just to protect it so now I'm just sanding it for the tip and we'll keep on working on for that and now what I got is I cut two grooves here for the handle and then here and now I'm going over it I'm using a rough file I use the sanding drum to put these little ribs in there and then I'll just use this to uh, get it down to where I want it and that's that's just as deep as this so I'm trying to use, to use the camera at the same time so and when I come up to here I'll just use the sanding drum and then I'll sand that sand that down but to get it get it down to where it's recessed a little bit for when I wrap it that's all I'm working on so and I still have this much to go so it's gonna take a few but I'm gonna start on this part right here and I still haven't started with my with my sharp bit yet my new one so I think this one still does, works pretty quite well so let's get on with it If you go too deep with it and you go like that it'll grab it and it'll jump so you gotta watch how far you go it's burning the wood a little bit it's not that sharp but but I noticed on some of the parts of the stick it's actually softer than others I don't know why but it is.
All right, what I'm doing now is you can see the the marks I made in the corners, and I'm taking a bit and carving them down because the bit I used before is this bit, and when you use it, it it's round. And it makes like a little a, a hill in the corners. So now I'm taking another bit, which is this one. This is not the smallest I have. And I'm going in there and I'm digging it out so it's like more straight. I, it does look sloppy still. I still have to go back and grind all of it smooth. And that's going to take some time still. So there you go. Okay, now that I got that all done, I'm going around and smoothing out everything and kind of squaring up the corners. I'm using a bit. The bit I'm using is, it's this diamond bit here. It, it fits down in there nice and straight and goes down around in the corners. And uh, you can use it on glass too, but I figured it works really well with this. So I'll, I'll just keep going in and, and smoothing around everything. It's just boring to see this, but it, it makes everything better. It looks a lot better. So we'll get on with that. All right, everybody, I'm I'm done with it. It's as good as I'm going to want to get it. It's not perfect, but that's it. I'm gonna, Now all I have to do is hand sand the outside, and we'll get on with that with the next step. All right, I started uh, sanding with 60 grit, and I'm going to go all the way up to 220 probably, and we'll get done with that. All right, for my next trick, well, you know, I'm going to hang this up and try to stain it. I never stained anything like this. It's going to be a pain in the neck, but it's all finished sanding. And I'm going to use this little brush, and the stain I'm going to use is Minwax Golden Oak. I like oak. I like the color that it gives. And so I'm going to hang it up outside and, and try to stain it without interruption. And we'll, we'll get on with that. All right, everybody, it's all stained, it's finished, and now I have to go over it with a, uh, and look for so many spots that I might have missed, like right, right there, I can see that, I missed that. And then what I'm going to do, I have two finishes, I'm gonna mix these together and make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, lighter than this, and then darker than this. Because what I wanna do is, is go on the inside of this, the channels, and make it a little bit darker so it's like a, a little bit of a contrast. So let's get on with that. Well, here you go. It's all uh, finished with that. I didn't want to show you all the, how to process. Just a small paintbrush and just goes right down in there and, and take your time. Took about 40 minutes. So there you go. On to the next, next one. So well, now what I'm doing is I'm using a toothpick, it's not working very well, to uh, fill in my stamps. I stamped my name, I bought these stamps a while ago, and they're for metal and stamping stuff, and I use them for the, my sticks now, and it, it seems to work, it works really well, on other, I don't know why it doesn't you can't really see it in this stick. So I'm just going to use, uh, use put my name, uh, I'm just going to use uh, the toothpick and some paint, just some hobby paint, that's all it is, to fill it in. And usually I will just take a brush and go around there and fill it in and then sand it off, but I'm not doing that because I'll sand off the stain. So let's get let's keep going with that. All right, now what I wanted to do for the for the top of the handle, we went to Hobby Lobby and we looked looked at a few of the the, the drawer pulls. I usually use those for a uh, thing, and I brought it home, and it was just just too small for the top. So what I'm going to do is I have this bottle opener that I bought a few years ago, and I was like, it's a Craftsman, works really well. So I was thinking of heating this up, and it'll melt the plastic. Pull that out drill it and glue it in there with some epoxy or some JB weld we'll give that a shot now we have a bottle opener whenever I'm walking let's give it a shot all right let's heat it up I don't want it to change color it's starting to change color See if 
that'll pull out. That should. No. Not given. Alright, we'll heat it up because that was starting to get red on this side. Should transfer heat down in there. It should be good enough. It's it's slightly moving. It's slightly. I thought that would have transferred that heat down in there pretty good, but looks like it's not. It's kind of wiggling. Let's keep going. That's got to be enough. Come on now. There, there it goes. Oh my God! I didn't want that plastic on me. Okay, that's that's finished. All right, everybody. That, that didn't take too long. I put I carved a, a notch in. I could have carved notches on the side, something for the glue to really bite into it and anchor it. And that's all I did. I just put it right in there. Um, I'm gonna put some stain on this, and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, everybody, I'm all done. I, I've got it glued in there. I painted the top, and I was like, I'm going to paint that instead of having that, like, the wood color. Because I tried to sand that stuff off. Now, what I have to do is, I have to tape this up with masking tape so uh, so I can spray it. i got to go with uh, the process of spraying it now. So we'll get on with that. All right, I was going to show you what kind of uh, stuff I use to spray it on there. So let's get going. All right, I'm gonna spray it. I don't want to use a brush because it's. You can adjust the spray on this to go up, to go sideways, or up and down. Oh, this garbage can's getting in the way. Well, here we are. I don't like the. The handle for now, I just rolled it around there and I, I glued it and cut it off and I got the handle and then here it is, all the way down. I don't know where the start, well the start's up there and the finish is down here and then this is at 27 hours uh, from laying it out to, to carving it to staining it and spraying it and wrapping it. So there you go. That's it. Now I gotta go take it for a walk. Thanks for watching.